Uh, morning class, how are you? I can see you fine, you look excited for another interesting maths lesson, right? Yes. Now today's lesson is on algebra. Now do you know uh, which part of mathematics is algebra? You're not sure, no? So I want you to do the following. Uh, go to a new page in your book, right? A new page in your book, right? And then, what's today's page? Yes. 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 So right then, 10 April. 2014. That's important that every day's lesson that you need to write down the date, isn't it? Mm -hmm. To keep track when was a certain topic covered in class. Do you agree with me? So the date is always important. Mm -hmm. Right. And of course, we are dealing with what we call the content area. Right. Remember in measurements, guys, we have five content areas. Right? We have what we call numbers, operations, and relationships. We have patterns, functions, and algebra. We have space and shape, or geometry as you know it, isn't it? We have measurement, and we have data handling. Remember the steps. Now, today's lesson is part of pattern and patterns, right? Patterns, functions, right? And algebra. Right, so that is today's lesson. And the focus is going to be on algebra. Right, so that will be our topic today, right? The topic today is algebra. You see, it's good for you to know when you learn a new topic, exactly where it fits in. Do you agree with me? Then it will make sense, isn't it? So when you prepare for the exams, and the sir says there will be algebra in the exams, then you know exactly where to go and go and study. Am I correct? Yes. So good for you to know exactly which topic and where in the mathematics are you busy with. Are you still with me, guys? Yes. Are you still follow what I'm trying to tell you? Yes. Right. And today, we are going to zoom in what we call the vocabulary of the language. So today's video, right? That is now today's video, right? Today's video will be on the language we use in mathematics. Right? The language. And what language, guys, what do we get? What do we use when we talk? If I talk now, what am I using? No, yeah. There's this instrument. Words, isn't it? I utter words. Am I correct, guys? Yes. And these words are part of your vocabulary. Do you agree with me? Yes. Am I correct? Yes. Now, mathematics got its own language. Do you agree with me? Mathematics do have its own language. If you use the wrong language, you will never understand mathematics. It will always be a problem to you. So, there. So today, the DVD focus on that. The correct language to use in algebra. Right. Right. Did you write all the down on this? Language in brackets that is today's video. Right. Now I'm going to start now showing you the video. If the lady talks too fast, you need to indicate to me. Let's uh, slow down or pause the DVD so that we can discuss what just happened now. Uh, are you cool with it? Yes. Don't allow the DVD to go on and on and on, and then you don't follow what you're trying to tell me. Are we cool with it? Yes. And I will be here all the time with you, to help you, to carry your problem. So are you ready for it? Yes. Right. Uh, please do not make notes. I'm going to give you the notes. I have the notes ready for you here. I'll give it to you. So you don't have to make notes. Okay, guys? Just Pay attention and try and understand. Are we, are we cool with it? Right. It will go to your start. Quick morning, teachers. Quick morning, class. The last time you saw me, we were still working on integers. Now we're going to talk about algebraic expressions. For us to do the algebraic expressions, there's certain vocabulary 
that we first need to look at so that we familiarize ourselves with the vocabulary and then it will be easy for us to do the algebraic expressions. So let's look at the vocabulary. You will see, apart from my numbers, that I also have letters here. And this is what algebraic expressions are about. And from the expressions, we are going to go to equations, and we will still be using letters. So why are we using the letters, and what is their meaning? We are replacing a number with a letter when we are doing our algebraic expressions. So we can write a uh, word sum using numbers and then we can switch it over to an algebraic expression. So that is what we will be practicing. But now before we can do that, as I said, we must look at the vocabulary. Now for an algebraic expression such as this, 3x raised to the power of 5 plus 6. Each of these components will have a name. And when you did uh, the previous work on exponent you just work with this, so we are just going to divide that. The 3 is the coefficient of x, so the number that comes before our value that has been substituted. Uh, the base will be x, and it has been raised to the power of 5, so the exponent of x is 5. Then the 6 that we have here is a constant. What does constant mean? It means that it doesn't change. And that also tells you then that it is something that does change. And what is that? So what we have in our algebraic is something that doesn't change and that is x. X will have for this expression a specific value. Okay, then there was a request from him that we must pause the, the value first. Now let's just quickly recap what happened. The page I just gave you now, guys, is exactly what the lady was talking about. Okay? So let's look at the page that I gave you, right, the page, so that we can see exactly what she was talking about. Remember she said today's lesson will be on algebraic expressions, right? So maybe you must also write it down in your book, right, the algebraic expressions. Then immediately she started talking about the, the vocab, the group. Remember, I said it's important for us to know certain terms. Now, in the very first column on your page, right, it says algebraic expression, and what is written there? 3x to the power of 5 plus 6. Do you agree with me, guys? Alright. 3x to the power of 5 plus 6. Do you agree with me? Now, why is that called an algebraic expression? Because remember, in the A, you also done equations. You remember? So, what is the difference, guys? You can tell me. What's the difference? An expression and an equation. Who would like to try? Anybody? No one? Okay. If I have to rewrite this one like that, What will you call this one? Well, this is an expression. So what will you call this one? An equation. Why? Because there's a, an equal sign, there's a left-hand side, and there's also a right-hand side. And that's why this is an equation. So if I come, come, come back to this one, guys, you see any equal signs here? Is there a left hand side and a right hand side? No. And that is how we know this is an expression. Is that clear now? An expression because there's no left hand side, there's no right hand side. In other words, you are not supposed to solve anything. You understand me now? In an equation, you must normally solve for x, isn't it? You agree? But here, must you solve for x? No. Ah, brilliant. So is that clear now, guys? Now, what is algebra? Because we're using a 
value there which is not a let a number but a letter. A letter from the alphabet. Here. It doesn't have to be X, it can be Y, it can be A, it can be B, any letter from the alphabet. You, you, you agree with me? Yes. That makes it algebra. Of course, the algebra started way back. I can even give you a little history lesson on, on the, uh, the Arab uh, mathematician Al Jabbar, who lived many, many years ago, who started developing algebra. But that is another day's discussion. Right. So, I'll be clear now what is an algebraic expression. To so clear what is written there in the very first column, guys. Are you cool with that? Yes. Okay, then, within that expression, on the right hand side, there's it mentions coefficient of x is 3. Now, if, you, now if I take the first term, remember guys, that is a term, isn't it? This is a term. An algebraic term. And there's different parts in the term. You see there's a constant value. Now, I call it a constant because it does not change. A 5 remains a 5. A 6 remains a 6. It's a constant. You agree with it? And we normally call, there's a name for it, we call it the numerical coefficient or the number coefficient. That's what we call it, right? The number coefficient, right? Difficult word. Remember what I said to you? Mathematics got a vocab. So you must start learning these words, right? A number coefficient. But x to the power of 5, this part here. That is where you don't see, you only see the 5, but remember 5 is the exponent. You still remember from the That 5 is called the exponent. So 5 is the exponent. Some people also call it the index. Right? Some people also call it the index or the exponent. And x itself, guys, is the base. It makes sense. Because x is the base and 5 is the exponent. Are you okay with that now? That is what she was trying to tell you there. And then of course, guys, the 6 here is also a constant. That is exactly what the lady was trying to explain to you on the DVD. Would you like me to rewind and play it again? Yes. And maybe after my explanation, it will make sense now. Yes. So you want me to, to rewind? Yes. Oh, fine. Let's go. <laughs> But the 6 will remain 6. Okay, I'm taking you back to the beginning eh? And maybe now it will make sense. Good morning, teachers. Good morning, class. The last time you saw me, we were still working on integers. Now we're going to talk about algebraic expressions. For us to do that algebraic expression, there's certain vocabulary that we first need to look at so that we familiarize ourselves with the vocabulary and then it will be easy for us to do that algebraic expression. So let's look at the vocabulary. You will see apart from my numbers that I also have letters here. And this is what algebraic expressions are about. And from the expressions, we are going to go to equations, and we will still be using letters. So what are we doing? Using the letters and what is their meaning? We are replacing a number with a letter when we are doing our algebraic expressions. So we can write a word sum using numbers, and then we can switch it over to an algebraic expression. So that is what we will be practicing. But now before we can do that, as I said, we must look at the vocabulary. Now for an algebraic expression such as this, 3x raised to the power of 5 plus 6. Each of these components will have a name. And when you did uh, the previous work on exponents, you did work with this. So we are just going to revise that. The 3 is the coefficient of x, so the number that comes before our value that has been substituted. Um, the base will be x, 
and it has been raised to the power of 5. So the exponent of x is 5. Then the 6 that we have here is a constant. What does constant mean? It means that it doesn't change. And that also tells me then that it is something that does change. And what is that? Right, so is that clear now? Yes. So don't allow it to order how it is. When we first played the, 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 the video, you were watching it, but did you understand what you were trying to explain? So was it good for me to intervene and explain to you again? Yes. Did that help? Yes. Uh, so, so, so you think that that's maybe the best way for me to, to do the DVD with you? Yes. Is to start maybe discussing with you and then continue. So are you cool with it? Right, we can do the last section now, right? Like terms, right? Are you ready? So what we have in our algebraic expression is something that doesn't change and that's x. x will have for this expression a specific value. But the 6 will remain 6. So if we give a value of 2 to x, it will give us a specific answer when we calculate this. But x is a variable. So for every single calculation that we do, it could have a different value. So it will not always be 5 or 3 or whatever, it could have a different value. Then we work with two things, we work with like terms and we work with unlike terms. And what is important for the terms is what it is that you look at. I've given two examples here to explain the principle. Firstly, I use a's and it's 4a plus 2a. So we are working with a's. We have four of them there and we have two of them there. So together, that will give us 6a. So they are like them and we can add them together. We but we could also have them with exponents. Okay, and that is where the trouble comes. When we add or subtract our algebraic expressions, we can only do that if they have the same base and the same exponent. Okay, so it can be the same basis if it doesn't have uh, exponent, or it must be the same exponent as well. So what we are saying here, for instance, if we have three x squared, we have this, and we have another one of it, and we have another one of that. If we have three of those x squared, Okay, that is what we say here. And here we have four. So if we have four apples and we have three apples, we will have seven apples. And it works the same with our algebraic expressions. We have an x squared. That is our term. And here our term is also x squared. So it's the same thing. We can add them together. Four plus three is not six. So what did you notice here? What was important was that the basis of the same. The basis must be the same. Did it bother us whether the numbers, the coefficients in front of the basis changed? No. That will just change our calculation. But what is important is that the base is the same and the exponent is the same if we want to add it up. Maybe we should pause this. So that will be like terms and we can add them up. As I said, we have four apples. Let's first pause there. Remember, she spoke about like term, but she also used another word, variable. Do you hear? She spoke about a variable. Right. What is a variable? What does the word to vary mean? It means to change, isn't it? To change. So a variable will be a number that can change. And that will be your x. That will be your x, guys. S can take on any other value. Remember that you've done substitution, remember? Where you have to put a number value into X. You remember? Yes. And that's why we call X the variable, because X can change. Then you spoke about like terms. Now look at your page, guys. There in the row, like terms. Now terms, then have the same basis, you said. 
They must have the same base. You know what? Where is the base again? Remember I said? X is your base. Do you, you see that? So for terms to be like terms, now what do we mean by like? By like we mean the same. Or in other words, identical, actually. So clear? They must be identical. Look at the example there. For instance, 4x squared and 3x squared. 4x squared and 3x squared. Let's look at those two terms. What is different and what is the same? Look at okay. Can you tell me what is different? Look at those two terms. Remember now, vocabulary, you must say what, so what do we call 4 and 3 again? No, 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 the 4 and 3. What do we call 4 and 3? Oh, okay. And I'm trying to tell you now. So what is different? Yes. The coefficients are? Remember guys, 4 and 3. Remember we must start using the right language now, right? 4 and 3 are the coefficients and they are? Different. What is the same? Look at them. Can you tell what is the same? Remember the right vocabulary now? The bases are the same. Brilliant. Ah. So the coefficients were different, but the bases are the same. So are they like terms? Remember what the lady said? The basis must be the same. Ah, so it doesn't matter, guys. The coefficients can be different. It doesn't matter. As long as the bases are the same, they are like terms. Are we clear on that? Are, are you sure? And of course, later on, you will learn that terms like this, you can add, you can subtract them. But that is in another lesson. Are we cool with that? Yes. Right. Let's continue now. Since we have three apples, can we have seven apples? What if we have three, three green apples and we have uh, four red apples? Are they still the same? Okay, so if they're not the same, they must be unlike terms. Terms that do not have the same basis. We have an X and an X. We can have an A and an A. We can have a B and a B. Because we can use any number of the alphabet to do the algebraic expression. It is a letter that substitutes a number for that specific scenario. Okay, so if they unlike terms, they will not have the same basis. This one's base is X, this one's base, base is Y. The other thing that is important is that they do not have the same exponents. Remember, we are adding. We're not multiplying or dividing or subtracting, we are adding. And we can only add them when they are the same. So these two are not the same. This is x raised to the power of 4 and x raised to the power of 2. Okay, so they're not the same and we cannot add them because they are unlike terms. So if you get something like that, I think so, okay? Do I need to pause? No. And if I ask you to give me an answer, your answer will be 2x to the power of 4 plus 3x to the power of 2. It will remain exactly the same because they are unlike terms. Right, I'm going to pause there quickly. Right. Oh. Remember she said that these like terms, you can add them. So in other words, 4x squared plus 3x squared will give you 4 plus 3 is 7 but you add the coefficients you add the coefficients now is it now x to the power 4? no because no. remember it, like you said it's like 4 apples plus 3 apples will give you 7 apples not 7 apples 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 you are the same but are you with that? So see you guys. Remember, you can also subtract them. Then she said, unlike terms. If you look at your page again, unlike terms, like, uh, I think it is 2x to the power of 4. Am I doing that, guys? Let's check for me. I'm in the, in the third row on the page now, in the column. 
plus 3x squared. Okay. 2 and 3 are the, what again, guys? What do you call them? The coefficients. But look at x to the power 4 and x to the power 2. Are they the same? No. no. They are completely different. It's okay, it's x and x, I agree with you. It's not x and y. But the exponents are different, isn't it? Yes. And that makes them unlike automatically. So please don't think it's x and x, you think, oh, they're the same. No, they must look identical. It's x, if one is x squared, the other one must also be x squared, isn't it? The one is x to the power 10, the other one must also be x to the power 10. So guys, if you have to add these two, what is the answer? The answer is the problem, isn't it? That is the answer. The answer is the problem because you cannot add it, so there's nothing you can do, isn't it? It remains the same. Right, now we go over into the activity, right? So... I want you to use as many as positive aids to assist you when you do your work. So if you don't have a set of colored pens or pencils, or you can use highlighters, um, I want you to acquire a set because it makes your work much easier. And we're going to use something along that line. It is on the page that though, right? We're going to use different colored pens because we want yeah, to pens, look at which of these terms I have given you, and it's quite an extensive list, and we want to see which of these terms are like terms. Okay. Which are like terms. So, let's use different color things for that our instruction. Now, the first one is 2x raised to the power of 3, so we must look for another one that is the same. So we know those ones are like terms. Are there any more that... Right. So, what was the first instruction? Look for terms, which is the same as the first one, isn't it? 2x to the power 3. Okay, I, I, I installed it, but it's too late now because I already installed the answer. Right, so I want you to do the same, guys. Just put a circle around the two which are like terms. Every time, on your page. Right? Oh, yeah, but, right. So on the page, show exactly. Just put a circle. You can use color pens. If you use your writing pen, it doesn't matter. Right. Do you all agree that those two are like terms? Why? Can you tell me why are they like terms? You can tell me. The the what is it? The base are the and exponents. And although the coefficients are different, it doesn't matter. How are we cool with the text? Can we can we continue? Anybody who's Confused. Anybody here who's lost? Who has no clue what's going on? Are you all with me? Can I say that or not? Brilliant. Okay. Is x to the power of 3 it doesn't look like that. So let's look for something else. Um, we have a 5x here. We have another. 5x. Look for another one which is the same. I'm doing that one. 5x, look for another term which is like, or a like term, like 5x. Okay, we do it on your page. First do it on your page, and then I'll ask you the answer, right? Right, are you done with that? Is that the only one? Do that, sure. So what is the answer you say? You say 3x, negative 3x. You want to agree with that? Yes. Yeah. So please, again, guys, don't let the negative sign confuse you. It doesn't matter. Like you said, the bases are the same. Are we cool with it? Ah, let's continue. x here, and remember what we said. We said the coefficient in front doesn't matter. No, that's not what we're looking at if we want to recognize like them. We are looking at the base. So that one and that is the same. Let us observe this one. Whenever you get something like this, the moment you have a bracket, it means that that term... Let's talk about that one quickly. Negative 4 and in the bracket, 2x. Can we simplify that term? Right? Think now. Can we simplify? I guess I'm going to say yes. Let's see. It is negative 4 and it is what? It is minus 2x. Am I correct, guys? Right? 
Like some of you said yes. Uh, some of you say yes. Can you tell me why you said yes? You just came from this table here. <laughs> Come, don't be shy, guys. Come. I agree with you, you're right. So don't be shy to tell me why you said yes. Can we simplify that? Yes. yes. How? We, you remember the distributive law, guys, where we multiply? You said remember. So what is a negative times a negative? Is a positive. But we write a plus? No, we don't. We know it's in here, right? And then what is 4 times 2? 8x. But wait a second. Isn't this also like the other two? Is it also like, like uh, 5x? Is it also the same like minus 3x? Ah. So therefore, this one, or this one rather, is also part of 5x minus 3x and so on. Aha. So you have to be careful because sometimes you need to simplify first before you can answer it. Are we clear on it? Yes. Right, let's continue. has not been simplified. And before you can work with it, you have to simplify the terms. Brackets, remember, means multiply. We distribute the 4 over the minus 2x and we get minus 8x. Okay, and that is the same term. Okay, maybe I'm going to just pause there. Yep. I mean, a little... X. Okay, I use a negative 4. But it's the same thing, guys. Look, yeah, it's a positive 4. You understand? So I just made a slight mistake. But does it matter in this case? No. Not really, because it is now the same matter. Only in this case, it will be negative 8, isn't it? Because it's a positive times a negative. But it is still like terms. They are still the same. So I hope I didn't confuse you with that little mistake now, eh? But it's positive. Are you starting with 9 and 3 first? Can I make a suggestion? Start with 9 and 3. See, can you simplify 9 and 3? Well, what do you think? Is it a good idea? Guys, what is 9 over 3 in your head? What does it tell you? 9 divided by 3. Brilliant. Yes. 9 divided by 3. Are you both stuck? Okay, let me help you. Don't go away. Stay there. Make sure. So, is 3 divided into itself? Once. It doesn't cancel, please. Because if it cancels, it disappears, isn't it? So, it doesn't cancel. It divides into itself what? And how many times in 9? 3. Aha. Uh -huh. Does it make sense now? Now what about the x to the power of 4 and x squared? You still remember how to do it? Your exponential laws, guys. When we divide, when we multiply, what happens to the exponents? We add them. If we divide, what happens to the exponents? Ah, oh, now you guys remember now. So we subtract them. So what you can do is, you can say x squared goes there once. Remember, we subtract the exponents, isn't it? So what's left, guys? Three. Uh, three. X. 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 Four minus two is two over one, isn't it? Yes. Of course, you all remember one is the identity element of division. Anything divided by one remains the same. <laughs> Thank you very much. So. 3x squared, where does it fit in? Where does it fit in? It's the same as 7x squared and 6x squared. Ah, let's just quickly round this off now. Another way to do it. X goes into itself once and into that x one. Another way to do it. X goes into itself once and into that x one. 
like once and into that one what? How many do we have left? Expect. So do you see why I'm doing it in blue? Because it correlates with the 7x squared and the 6x squared. It is the same base, the same exponent. Something very important here. I know that sometimes the word cancel out is used. But I don't want you to use that word and I don't want the teacher to use that word. Why? We are not cancelling anything out. We are dividing by the term itself. We are dividing x into itself and we get 1. And we divide x into itself and we get 1. If we say cancel... Right, guys, so, so we're going to wrap it up there. So I hope now that you've learned certain words now. The vocabulary. Like what is a term, what is a base, what is a coefficient, what is like terms, what are unlike terms. So you've learned those words. They are on that page. Please, you must stick that page in your book now. Don't lose it. Right? Yes. And then your son will take the lesson further with you next time. Yes. Guys, you are brilliant. Thank you very much, eh? Yes. You are brilliant. I appreciate your cooperation. And I'm glad that you're working for your book. So let's compare the first uh, video and the second uh, sh uh, shot. The first way, remember I just said you watch and I went to go inside there. Did it work? Good. Now the second time around, when I was interacting with you, working with you, did you learn? Yes. Uh, guys, thank you very much. Take care. Eh?